World Food Day celebrated globally every year by the FAO on October 16th, uh, along with 150 countries around the world. Uh, this year's theme, Grow, Nourish, Sustain Together, Our Actions Are Our Future. First ever World Food Day uh, celebrated here for our country of Belize, as, as we all are aware, due to, to the pandemic that is affecting the entire uh, globe. Without any further delay, then I will now ask my Chief Agriculture Officer to give us some welcome remarks. Chief. Thank you, Mr. Emilio Monteiro, Master of Ceremonies. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture and Immigration, the organizing committee on, on my behalf, I have great pleasure to welcome you to the World Food Day Virtual Observance. The Ministry of Food and Agriculture are proud to be part of this event because we need to continue to feed the nation by ensuring that we save energy, save money and time while conserving our environment. We are, honored, we are honored by the presence of the Honorable Senator Gladwin Hulse, who is with us today as our guest speaker. Also accompanying us is the Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Edmund Zuniga. We also have the privilege to have a few representatives for, for Bahamas, Belize, and Jamaica, Dr. Christine Moreira, who will be joining us virtually from Jamaica. We are honored by the presence of Dr. Noreen Jack, the Pan American Health Organization and World Health Organization as country representative. And also we have the presence of Dr. Marvin Manzanero, Director of Health Services. And lastly, in our panel is Ms. Robin Daly, who will give the vote of thanks. Furthermore, I would like to welcome the viewers watching, being faculty and students of participating institutions, member of the diplomatic and consular corps, heads of department of various ministries, and senior government officials. Also, welcoming the representative from national and international partners in development, and last but not least, farmers. Welcome to this virtual gathering for the celebration of World Food Day with the theme Grow, Nourish, Sustain. Together our, together our actions are our future. A fed nation is a happy nation. Welcome. Thank you. So to continue with our program, we will now continue with uh, Dr. Crispin Moreira joining us from Jamaica, FAO Rep for Bahamas, Belize, and Jamaica. Dr. Crispin Moreira, the audio and television is now yours. Thank you for the introduction, Mr. Montero, Honorable Senator Goodwin Hills, Minister of Food and Agriculture and Immigration, Mr. Andrew Harrison, Chief Agriculture Officer, Dr. Noreen Jack, Bajo, WHO representative, Dr. Marvin Manzanero, Director of Health Services. Good morning, good afternoon to you all. World Food Day 2020 marks FAO's 750th anniversary during a very exceptional time, as the world is dealing with the widespread effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. During this unprecedented time, World Food Day calls for global solidarity to help all populations, and especially the most vulnerable, to recover from the crisis. It also calls for action in making food systems more resilient and robust so they can withstand increasing volatility and climate shocks, deliver affordable and sustainable healthy diets for all, and decent livelihoods for all. 
This will require improved social protection schemes and new opportunities offered through digitalization and e-commerce, but also more sustainable agricultural practices that preserve the earth natural resource, our health and the climate. It is also an occasion to sensitize the public on how everyone has a role to play in transforming our food systems by changing the way we produce and consume our food. However, no action can aspire to be transformative if it falls to be collective or inclusive. Countries, private sector, civil society, and of us, all of us need to make sure that our food systems grow a variety of food to nourish a growing population and sustaining the planet together. We all have a role to play from increasing the overall demand for nutritious food by making health choices and to not letting sustainable habits fall by the wayside. We must make healthy eating a part of our daily life by choosing local and seasonal food, reduce food waste and being more aware of our carbon footprint. Ladies and gentlemen, Minister Hill's colleagues, our actions are our future. It is fundamental that the governments everywhere treat food production, transport, make and distribution as essential services that must be sustained. There needs to be strategic policies coordination between health, agriculture, and social protection. We have seen the work of the government of Belize in this regard. And FAO remains committed to supporting the nation's effort to protect the most vulnerable people by promoting economic inclusion and social protection and boosting smallholder resilience. Finally, on this World Food Day, we must take our food heroes, farmers and workers throughout the food supply chain, who no matter the circumstance, continue to provide food to their communities and beyond. In the early days of the pandemic, when people worried about food supply, business were halted, farmers were losing profit, and marketplace fell silent. We realized how we were taking these services and the people that provide them for our granted. So today, we acknowledge all our food heroes who continues to work and adjust to the new change environment, showing their inherent resilience and importance to keep our food value chain alive. We owe you a great deal. And so on behalf of the FAO, we say thank you. Thank you, food heroes. May we all continue to support and look up to these heroes. I wish you all a safe and productive Wood Food Day. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Moreira, for, for that wonderful message uh, in, in regards to World Food Day. Grow, nourish, sustain together. Our actions are our future. Thank you. Uh, we will now continue with our next special remarks. Uh, the speaker, uh, Dr. Nareen Jack, Pahohu, Belize Country Rep. Yes, Dr. Jack, I almost was going to say to please turn on your camera. Thank you. So the audio yes. and the floor is now yours, Dr. Jack. So good afternoon, everyone. And I... Honorable Senator Goodwin Hosey, Minister of Food and Agriculture and Immigration, 
Mr. Andrew Harrison, Chief Agriculture Officer, Dr. Marvin Manzanero, Director of Health Services, Ministry of Health, Dr. Crispin Morera, Food and Agriculture Organization Representative for, for Belize, Jamaica, and the other countries that he covers, Ms. Kenya Paramo, Country Coordinator for INCAP, Dr. Annabelle Maciel of UNICEF, Ms. Robin Daly of the Ministry of Health, and Mr. Emilio Montero. It is my pleasure to bring greetings on from the from the Pan American Health Organization and World Health Organization on the observance of the World Food Day 2020 with the team Grow, Nourish and Sustain Together. The day is observed every year on October 16 and raises awareness about the importance of good food and nutrition. Um, they, it's established the celebration promotes global awareness and actions to reduce hunger and to ensure healthy diets for all and remains very relevant today. The celebration provides opportunities to explore topics such as how the agriculture needs to adapt to the due to climate change and achieving sustainable agriculture and food and security and educating people to make simple changes for healthy nutrition. The, in, I'll continue in the context of the sustainable development goals and just focusing on three. Goal two, which is to zero hunger, which seeks sustainable solutions to end hunger in all its forms by 2030, and the achievement of food security. However, the sustainable development goals are all interconnected. And goal one, ending poverty in all its forms, as well as goal three, ensuring healthy lives and promoting well-being for all at all ages are intricately connected to goal two, zero hunger. Together, they provide the vision of ensuring everyone everywhere has enough good quality food through widespread sustainable agriculture leading to better nutrition, a healthier life, and a productive workforce contributing to ending poverty. So in 2020, and Dr. Moreira has, has mentioned it before, but in 2020, the world is faced with the challenge of COVID-19 um, pandemic. And therefore, the World Food Day celebration has even greater significance. The COVID pandemic has impacted on health and livelihoods and economic development of persons throughout the world. And food is therefore one of the basic necessities of survival. And therefore, during this pandemic, eating nutritious and healthy foods has become even more important of maintaining one's health. But at this time, we know there are many challenges in doing so in sometimes where people, because of, of loss of livelihoods, loss of drug jo jobs, this may be a, a difficulty for some persons to obtain, obtain the nutrition they, re they require. The response to the pandemic, we say, requires solidarity and cooperation among people, both nationally and globally. And this is, continues to be through in the case of the solidarity uh, through the availability of food. In general, food systems need to be more resilient and robust so that they can withstand the threats, including of those of climate shocks while delivering affordable and sustainable healthy diets for all and a decent livelihood for food system workers. The COVID pandemic is not our only health threat. And in our Caribbean countries, non-communicable diseases and obesity, hypertension, diabetes, cardiac disease are increasing threats to our health. And in reference to a 2019 document, a publication called the Panor Panorama, of food and nutrition security of the United Nations, it calls for urgent action to curb the rise in hunger and obesity in Latin America and the Caribbean. It calls countries in the regions to develop urgent actions 
to address the increase in what we call the double burden of malnutrition. So in the past, we had wasting and stunting, but today the, big, the, the malnutrition is related to obesity and the outcomes of the impact of obesity on health. The percentage of people with obesity tripled since 1975 and hunger increased 11% in the last four years. In addition, every year, 600,000 persons die in Latin America and the Caribbean due to diseases related to poor diets and die because of diabetes, hypertension, and cardiovascular disease. So this report also highlights the need to promote healthier food environments through taxes and incentives that favor healthy foods, social protection systems, school feed-in programs, and the regulation of food advertising and marketing. The agencies also stress the importance of improving food labeling and front of package labeling, ensuring the consumer is aware of what they are consuming and make informed decisions in terms of what they decide to consume. So PAHOT and WHO together we are working to continue to work throughout the, the Americas um, to address and to identify the risk factors associated with non-communicable disease and to promote healthy food choices through the life course. So I'll end at this time and really want to say thanks for the opportunity to participate in this um, session and in, in the team, continue our team for grow, nourish and sustain together. And therefore, I will end by saying I wish you a happy, well, happy World Food Day, but also the continuation of this session today. Thank you, and I'll end at this time. Over. Thank you, Dr. Jack. Well said. Uh, the team and all the messages gathered around the issues of malnutrition and overweight and obesity that links with all the different um, illnesses that, and the challenges that the global population uh, does face. We will continue then with the uh, delivery of the message from our DHS, Dr. Marvin Manzanero from the Ministry of Health. So Dr. Manzanero, I now pass you the floor, the audio and the world to you. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's good afternoon now. Uh, Mr. Montero and your team, um, Senator Minister uh, Holtz, good afternoon. Dr. Jack, Dr. Moreira joining, joining us virtually. Um, CEO in Agriculture, Mr. Harrison and your team at Agriculture, Robin and Kenya from Ministry of Health. Um, you know, I, 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 coming back from a COVID-19 press conference, I had to rush back here and I know Dr. Jack has touched on some of the topics that are relevant. And I, and I think COVID-19 has served to put other items on the table that we routinely perhaps would not be thinking. And the association with food and proper healthing, proper eating then, I think are key and the COVID-19 pandemic should allow us to stress those particular notes. So under the team, grow, nourish, sustain together um, our actions, as it states, are our future. Um, and I don't know if this team was envisioned when the pandemic was on or how timely it is, but when you look at the specific notes in here, I think there's a clear articulation of where we are and where we are supposed to go, especially when you're talking about sustainability for smaller countries such as Belize, where we have to acknowledge that we have a, a long way to go, and I think we have a lot of potential in terms of where we should be in terms of food sustainability. The day really should be, and I, I think that the word celebration was used a couple of times, and I perhaps am not too keen on highlighting the fact about a celebration, but rather perhaps an observation and a time of reflection, because it should allow us to highlight the progress that we have indeed made um, against elements such as malnutrition, which Dr. Jack has alluded to, uh, malnourishment and elements of stunting that we may have had decades ago. But from the health standpoint, I think we have kind of flipped the coin, and now we're having another element of 
malnutrition and that is obesity, particularly rising obesity in children and adolescents. And in terms of COVID-19, I, I feel that there might be some more feeding into those numbers simply because children are, as you would know, less active because there is no real school settings under which they can do physical education. So there is more likely for people to be engaged in, in technologies that keep them away from playing outside. So that's something that I think ne needs to be factored in. From the Ministry of Health standpoint, I think we have done our part. We are aware of the elements tied to NCDs, non-communicable diseases. But we are seeing that the primary leading causes of death still remain hypertensive diseases, diseases of the heart, diabetes, and obesity. And when you look at the particular COVID-19 pandemic, and now we have 42 deaths because we just, I just got to know that we have a, the 42nd death um, for, for, for Belize. Almost consistently, the common denominators there will be hypertension, obesity, and diabetes. And when you think about the elements that lead to that, beyond the genetic factors, beyond the environmental factors, it has to do with what we do, what we eat, what we drink. And so you, talking about World Food Day, you can't really escape away from that particular notion, right? COVID-19 does underscore this particular value, what we are learning, what we can learn, and where we should go. Um, it is also talking about having good food supplies, but also talking about inadequate food supplies because the fact that we are having something to eat doesn't necessarily mean that that is the proper nutrition that we are getting. And that's why we continue to speak about improper nutrition, which is what I think this day should allow us to talk about. Our actions indeed are our future together. Everyone is a part of the food system. I think somebody highlighted that before me. And I, Dr. Moreira stressed that we are all part of the food chain. And I think this is the opportunity. I mean, Belize is very rich in terms of its natural resources. We have a lot of potential in terms of agriculture. I think we are a very agriculture-driven economy more so before than, than we are now. I think we are primarily driven by tourism. But maybe COVID-19 is the opportunity for us to go back there because at the end of the day, there will always be a need for food. And if we were that sustainable, we perhaps would not really be discussing and be worried about the tourism element. If you we were all able to grow and sustain the basic elements, the things that we shy away from now, the, the fact that we should be eating the chaya, the chocho, and all those things that children are not exposed to, I think this is the opportunity. Right? We should, I mean, even though it talks about our actions or our future, I, I think the actions should be our now more than our future. So one other note I want to rescue that has been said before, the element of food heroes, because I think that's something that's traditionally forgotten. We traditionally want to be talking about people being lawyers, being doctors, being engineers, but really we have food heroes, because if we don't have the food heroes that are doing it out, sweating it out on the field, then we are not really going to go anywhere. So the other final item I have in terms of the COVID-19 and where we are going as a ministry of health, it's not just being fed, because I think the word fed was it's being properly fed is the key note that we should be anchoring our actions on. So I think the, the team is, is of value in COVID-19 times. And we do hope that this is just the start and, and the ongoing relationship that I know happens at the relevant departments be, between the Ministry of Agriculture and the Ministry of Health. But I think it's the opportunity also to engage other ministries and see the value of agriculture, good food, trickling into health, now that the limelight is particular in the public health arena, but engage the other ministries to make sure that we are taxing perhaps all those unhealthy foods and making sure that all these healthy elements are coming at a cheaper price for the people that really need it. Thank you. Indeed, Dr. Manzanero, that's one of the reasons um, we're very happy for, for you to have joined us to knowing your expertise and your knowledge that you have, especially around the pandemic that is um, affecting Belize and, and the rest of the world. Uh, just to add to what you're saying, yeah, uh, just like how we have expertise within our country, FAO also has expertise and it's FAO that chooses the teams on a yearly basis 
and then they share it with the different ministries of agriculture around the world. So I guess they're also uh, seeing what's happening and affecting the global population and in respect to that, that's how they come about and um, the, the, the put forth the, the teams that are being sent on a yearly basis. And before we play our Belize Food Heroes, yes, I don't know if Robin did tell you because she's a part of the of the planning committee, but the, the comments you, you mentioned about um, agriculture now uh, being the focus of of Belize as how tourism is being affected. The two videos that you will be seeing rightfully will touch what you are commenting on. So as so that's our next um, item on our, on our program. Uh, Belize Food Heroes proudly put together by Belizeans. And Armando would, can share who actually was more involved in putting the video together. So Chief, roll it as they say. <laughs> Have a right to food, so Belizean plant your food from the farm gate straight to your plate by Belizean quality food. Come celebrate World Food Day, all Belizean man and woman. Come this way, go pound on land, promoting healthy lifestyle. Fear the man and woman. On the occasion of the 75th anniversary of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. FAO is celebrating this year's annual World Food Day under the theme, Grow, Nourish, Sustain, Together. Our actions are our future. Calls to celebrate our food heroes, including farmers, workers along the food chain, food banks, or others who together are making sure that food continues to make its way from farms to our tables. The COVID-19 global health crisis has also affected small countries like Belize. It is time to reflect on things that we truly cherish and our most basic needs. Without access to food, there can be no stable democracy, no prosperity, no future. Food is the essence of life and the bedrock of our communities. Los Pequeños Agricultores y Ganaderos de Nagu Bank Cooperative have been named food heroes for adapting preventative measures during this world crisis and for supplying the country with basic needs. Los Pequeños Agricultores y Ganaderos de Nagu Bank Cooperative is located in Nagu Bank, a small community on the northeast of the Belize district facing the beautiful Caribbean Sea. De la cooperativa Los Pequeños Agricultores y Ganaderos de Nagobank Cooperative started as a group in 2010 and was registered as a cooperative in 2013. At the beginning of being registered, we were a total of 22 people, 5 women and 17 men. Life for us as farmers has changed quite strongly with the aspect of the pandemic. As you can see, the borders have been closed as well as the airport. We as farmers have felt a bit pressured despite this pandemic to always work hard. A long time ago, our work before COVID was different. We did it with more freedom, but now we cannot do it. We always work with the care to avoid any contagion. We cannot do it as before, as when we went to the market to sell. Now we do it differently. We have a special person that we send to the market with the necessary measures so that that person cannot have contagion from the pandemic. For me, being a farmer in these times, and as always, has been a great responsibility because we farmers have to make an effort every day so that the food reaches especially to our families and then also supply food vegetables to other people in the country. We feel very happy as farmers, very happy to be able to do this important part for the country and for the people. We feel like heroes, knowing that in the city, for example, where you cannot grow tomato, sweet pepper or watermelon, that these products can reach them. 
The situation of this pandemic has affected the whole world at this time. It's difficult for us. For us, it has been somewhat a shocking experience because of the pandemic. We have observed that the sales area decreased. Before the pandemic, everything was fine. It can be said because we had enough product, enough place to expand it, and where to distribute it. It was a radical change for all in the sales area. Very low in some areas. Customers order from us and now we send it directly. We pack it and send it by barge or boat so that the people no longer have the risk of leaving their homes and having direct contact with us. To avoid infecting ourselves or others, we have a specific place where we pack the product. My dream in five to ten years is that this gallery we are in right now is converted into a packing shed facility where we can process our products. The desire of us as a group is that we can form a company, an established business, so that we can have better opportunities, not only for the group, but also for our children. My dream in four to five years is in the area of marketing, have more access to technology, be able to give better customer service, that the people from different places get to know about us and the quality of product that we handle, and increase sales to be able to have more access to finance so we are able to produce more. From the farm gate straight to your plate by Belizean quality food. Come celebrate World Food Day. All Belizean man and woman. Come this straight to grow pound no land. Promoting healthy lifestyle. Fear the man, the woman and child. Nobody import foods, buy from your roots. You never know we got the best all the boys. Sing with me. Everyone have a right to food. So Belizean plant. So there, Dr. Manzanero. Very well. Yes. Watching your comments. Okay, so that was the Belize Food Heroes video that, that we were able to put together with support from our ministry along with FAO and other stakeholders. We now come to our special invited guest, our own minister of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, the Honorable Senator Godwin Hulse, to deliver our key note remarks on this World Food Day. Thank you very much and pleasant good afternoon, somebody said. Uh, thank you, Emilio, for being such a good moderator. I want to start by welcoming and thanking at the same time our virtual guests, Dr. Jack and Dr. Moreira. And thank you especially, Dr. Crispin Moreira, for your support to Belize in terms of advancing FAO's program here. I want to recognize, of course, our CEO, Mr. Edmund Zuniga. He's new, and as a consequence, most, person, most people do not, or perhaps are not aware that he has replaced Mr. Jose Alpuche. Excellent job he's been doing in this ministry. He's, he's had his agriculture, fire, agriculture baptism by fire. I want to also recognize and welcome our CAO, Mr. Andrew Harrison. Thank you, Andrew, for all you do. And of course, uh, I want to recognize our two guests, Ms. Kenya Pramaro, INCAP's country representative, I trust I had your name correct, and Dr. Annabel Marcial, nutritionist in UNS, UNICF. Thank you for being here. I want to also recognize you, Dr. Marvin Mancenero. You're doing an excellent job. You are not to compare, because nobody wants to compare, but you are a Belizean Dr. Fauci without, of course, having the hammers and the licks that he's getting. We're, we're pleased of you. Um, thank goodness we don't have a president like that. I want to recognize my colleague at the end there, Dr. Vic Pasquale, and also Mr. Jose Novello. Uh, I want to recognize Mr. Bellamina Esquivel, who is our principal agricultural officer and our champion with respect to cattle. Ms. Robin, welcome to this forum. You've always been around whenever food and agriculture has anything to do. And so I'm not sure whether you're a Ministry of Health or a Ministry of Food, but we adapt you. Uh, Mr. Aban, welcome for FAO's representative here. Of course, 
I've recognized my CEO already, and of course, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Ms. McKin, my assistant and support to the minister, quietly there, she's been challenged to keep me up to date with all that I do. So welcome all. This is a very interesting day, and I look forward to World Food Day every year, because it gives us a time to take out a space to celebrate our people. It is a day we remember when we should remember those around the world who are hungry and undernourished, and there are millions, and there is no need for that, but this is the way it is. But it gives us also a day to thank the blessings from God and our small, beautiful nation of Belize. We are especially thankful during this long period of shutdown due to COVID-19 pandemic, we have been able to sustain ourselves with adequate food supplies. The blessing of God, of course, goes to our hardworking farmers, our food processors, our food distributors, and those who put in the final touches, be their cooks in restaurants, be their cooks in restaurants, and, uh, or the food vendors on the streets, or the diligent housewives or house husbands taking care of their families. The chain, from our perspective in this ministry, is food production, food processing and preservation, food preparation and distribution. The Ministry of Food and Agriculture has promoted this chain in partnership with our local producers and processors, as well as with our international partners. The World Bank has been gracious to us, CDB, IDB, CATE, IFAD, AICA, FAO, CARDI, UNDP, as well as the CARICOM Secretariat and others. And on the bilateral front, our partners in Taiwan, with whom we have just recently concluded a partial scope agreement, the EU for their long and sustainable contribution to Belize through both the AMS program for sugar and bananas, and of course one of our major trading partners, the United States, Mexico, and Guatemala, with whom we've had a partial scope agreement for some time. The ministry has been an active participant in all the regional conferences as a full standing member of SICA and CARICOM and meetings among the Central American Council of Agriculture Ministers as well as, common, as CARICOM ministers are held on a continuing basis. And we do this to discuss and promote best practices for food production and distribution, especially in vulnerable communities at this time. Indeed, starting on Monday, there will be a three-day conference from FAO, and the focus is simple, food for people during this time on a sustainable basis. Dr. Manzanero's words spoke very true when he said that, in fact, food and agriculture should be our primary undertaking and the driver of our economy. As the world economy goes, however, the focus is on bottom lines and quick and easy progress that comes from services, especially tourism, and in many countries from manufacturing. But our ministry has always maintained that the Ministry of Food and Agriculture driving that process from production through to processing and through to distribution could balloon into the biggest, most sustainable uh, leg of this economy, and we continue to maintain that. The Ministry has participated actively in the Parliamentary Alliance Against Hunger and Malnutrition with a view to eliminating both by 2030 as part of our Millennium Goals. This push has been chaired by our former Speaker of the House of Representatives, the Honorable Laura Longsworth, and had active participation from both sides of the oil. Hopefully, in this, this will continue under a new parliament. This program promotes actively food and agriculture education at the primary and the secondary levels, and the establishment of school gardens and school kitchens to teach and promote healthy eating at an early stage. This particular program has been pushed by Emilio with energy and vigor, and at this point, I want to give him a big hand. <laughs> the ministry underwent a name change, which was part of a pledge to highlight food focus, a self-evident but often overlooked concept. We added food to the name to make the ministry 
a ministry of food and agriculture. This was intentional because while agriculture was somewhere on the horizon and being replaced and replaced, we wanted to have a ministry that spoke primarily to the most important things in our lives, food. And I was grateful that the Honorable Prime Minister and the Governor General side fit at my request to change the name. I trust that successive governments will keep that name as a ministry of food and agriculture, at least right through until we attain our millennium goal in 2030 of reducing hunger and, of course, eliminating malnutrition. But while we give thanks and praise, there's something we cannot overlook. And we cannot overlook the fact that Mother Earth is hurting and crying out for a change in the way we utilize her resources. A changing climate is upon us, and no matter how we spin it or argue about it in all the international forums, be that the Rio Convention or the Paris Accord, the fact is that farmers are experiencing dry for longer periods, then excessive rains for short periods, causing floods and erosion. New and different pests are emerging, be it in plants or insects. Food production decreases as yields do. More and more fertilizers and pesticides are required. Scientists in developing countries are working for large corporations, developing genetically modified plants and organisms in a quest to keep food on the table and improving the bottom line of their businesses. This is not sustainable. While in Belize, the ministry has promoted food production as a business and away from subsistence, the resources to sustain this onslaught in this new competitive area is just not available to small countries like Belize. We therefore must take a different approach, an approach which focuses on climate smart production, preservation and improvement of our soils through regenerative agricultural practices, harmonizing livestock and crop production to yield improved results. We must promote the management and maintenance of our forests and catchment basin areas which are blessed, which, with which we are blessed in order to sustain our long-term agricultural production and food availability. Our waterways, our rivers and seas are also in the mix as they provide the other most important element to our sustainability. The reduction of plastics, harmful chemicals, and other substances which pollute our waters is a must as our aquatic life and food production from the rivers and the sea is equally important. Ladies and gentlemen, these are our challenges and they are before us, but the solutions are also in our hands, particularly for a small and blessed country like Belize. While we all punish a little bit under the pressures of COVID, we are also given an opportunity to redefine our positions. Many people are now working from home, and that is a new, that is a significant and new paradigm shift. Many of us find ourselves more productive working from home than commuting to offices every day. Tremendous reduction in utilities for not being in the offices. Tremendous reduction in the use of fuels, which cleans our atmospheres. You will notice, if you follow it, that in many countries, the deer, the birds, and others find now that there is a seaside. They find now that there is a road. They find now that they can go in backyards. It is giving us a lesson, a serious lesson, which we must not lose, that in fact, we have been in this rat race to destroy ourselves. On the market front, we have experienced tremendous difficulties. The farmers from Nago Bank in that video just highlighted the fact that their traditional marketing practices in the tourism industry evaporated overnight, literally overnight, because no tourists was coming, so no sales of vegetables, etc. And they had to create a new dynamic to survive. The same with our grain farmers, the same with our cattle farmers. And at this moment, we are having challenges with our cattle farmers who are crying out and complaining that they cannot sell their production as they used to. But I want to appeal to them and others in the marketing area that it is not business as usual. It is business in a new dynamic. The ministry, together with our team, headed by our principal agricultural officer, has worked diligently to try to get our experts into Guatemala 
and Mexico formalized, and we have been most successful in that regard. This is a great opportunity for Belize to build a new export industry on solid grounds to compete and to complement our citrus, our shrimp, our bananas, and our grains. But we must do it right. The fact that Mexico and Guatemala reached out to us with this cattle trade is significant. And we really should not undermine that by trying to return to practices of previous. Give us a break, give us a chance, pull our resources together, pull our minds together, and this can work for everybody. Those challenges we can overcome if we work together. If we cooperate, if we communicate effectively, and if we find common ground in all our endeavors, we as Belizeans can continue to grow, to nourish, and to sustain ourselves because our actions are our future. So I say, together, we all can. I want to thank my cabinet colleagues and the Prime Minister for having given me the opportunity to serve as Minister of Food and Agriculture. No one knows the future, but I can assure you I was in agriculture, is in agriculture, and I will die in agriculture and food production. I want to thank the members of this ministry. All of you have been stellar, hardworking, and outstanding in supporting me, supporting the ministry into a new dynamic. I want to thank again all the farmers who have been working out there. We were struggling to find female farmers to satisfy the World Bank's requirements because unlike many countries in Africa and in Asia, we do not have a tradition of women leading the farming. It's not part of the structure. So we were challenged to find adequate amount of females to fit the World Bank's requirement, but we were able to satisfy the requirement finally. We have begun to distribute the support to the cane farmers. We're distributing it to all the other farmers under our BAME's requirement. So on that note then, I also want to thank all the producers and all the producer associations. Together, we certainly can, and we can continue. A happy World Food Day to all, and blessings to all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister, for <clears throat> delivering the keynote remarks. Uh, you have been our keynote the speaker for the past three years, uh, Julian Cho, in 2017. Uh, now with our virtual uh, World Food Day ceremony, Grow, Nourish, Sustain Together. And in all of those, in all of those keynote addresses that you have been given, that you have been uh, delivering to us and the audience, uh, very relevant and inspiring words and encouraging words as well that you have been sharing with us and today was was no exception and tying into what you're saying i think the next short video that has been put together by bmdc and the agro processing unit at central farm will also add to your keynote remarks that you just said so with that said we will um Proceed with this short video, and then we have uh, Ms. Robin Daly right after giving her vote of thanks. Today we celebrate World Food Day 2020 under the team Grow, Nourish, Sustain Together. We're here at the Ministry of Agriculture Central Farm at the Agro Processing Unit, where our main focus is product development and research through the utilization of locally produced crops. Using research and innovation, we're able to reduce post-harvest wastage through value addition. The processing unit comprises of three main parts. Receiving area, the processing area, and end product storeroom. The processing facility meets Belize Agricultural Health Authority requirements for processing facilities, offering quality, innovative, and safe products for all Belizeans. The Belize Marketing and Development Corporation services was sought by the agro-processing unit to create a lasting brand impression for the baking pot brand. These quality Belizean-made products meet all labeling requirements by the Belize Bureau of Standards. We at the Belize Marketing and Development Corporation provide assistance to the agro-processing unit and producers of Belize 
assisting in product labeling and development, sourcing of packaging materials, branding, market innovations, and sales through our branding program. The Belize Marketing and Development Corporation encourages all Belizeans to show support and buy local. So as you can see, well put video uh, in regards to value addition and what further agro-processing can do uh, in respect to agriculture. So I now pass the mic to Ms. Robin Daly, a nutritionist within the Ministry of Health to deliver our thankfulness to everyone. Ms. Robin. All right, thank you, Emilio. As we close off today's World Food Day virtual ceremony, I would like to leave you with some key messages for you to keep in mind. Food is important. Countries need to scale up actions to strengthen food systems. Healthy food is key to address hunger and malnutrition. Let us continue to support local farmers and encourage production of healthy local foods grown in Belize so that accessibility and availability can be for all. Let us continue to educate and advocate on the benefits of eating our local fruits and vegetables. We need to continue to choose local. Purchase and consume our local food. Start planting. Locate a small area, start a garden. This can be one of the simplest and basic strategies for addressing hunger and malnutrition. With that concept in mind, I would like to thank Mr. Gary Ramirez and his team from the Horticulture Unit for producing 15,000 seedlings that will be distributed countrywide. This will be a great start for many communities and families to start planting their own food. I would like to thank also the agriculture team that created that very informative and inspiring video of food heroes. Michael Balan, Horace Jones, Roberta Sosa, thank you. Our FAO country rep, Mr. Armando Aban, and the support from the FAO regional office for their continued support to Belize. We are thankful also for the various presenters who shared key points today. Mr. Andrew Harrison, Chief Agriculture Officer, Dr. Crispin Moreira, FAO Rep for the Bahamas, Belize, and Jamaica. Dr. Noreen Jack, PAHO WHO Country Rep for Belize. My boss, Dr. Marvin Manzanero, the Director of Health Services from the Ministry of Health. Special thanks to our guest speaker, the Honorable Senator Godwin Hulse, Minister of Food and Agriculture, and our CEO, Mr. Edmund Zuniga, for their continued support. We are thankful for the support of our local and international partners, Orisa and Mr. Furman Blanco, INCAP and Ms. Kenya Paramo, UNICEF, Ms. Annabel Maciel, Dr. Polanco from PAHO, even though he's not here with us, he's been very instrumental in all of our planning behind the scenes and the continued support of PAHO, the Belize Marketing Development Corporation, our very own planning committee for the World Food Day, which comprise of members from the Ministry of Agriculture, the Ministry of Health and Education. We send our sincere appreciation and thanks to the man behind the scenes, Mr. Emilio Montero, the chair of the National Food and Security Commission and one of the key organizers of our local activities here in Belize. I close with our theme for this year, Grow, Nourish, Sustain, Together, Our Actions, Our Future. I thank you all for your support and participation in this year's activities, and thank you. Thank you very much, Robin. Indeed, uh, we have been working quite closely in collaboration with the key ministries that Robin is mentioning. And one of the highlights uh, that this virtual uh, pan pandemic caused us to, to do is for the next week, the 15,000 seedlings that Robin mentioned, starting today, we delivered seedlings in the Cairo district uh, for ministries of health, education, agriculture, as well as what we call open distribution. And next week, starting Monday, uh, we will be doing Toledo on Tuesday, Stan Creek, Wednesday, the Belize district, Thursday will be Orange Walk, and on Friday, we'll finish with our final distribution of seedlings 
in the Corozal District Minister. So that is uh, one of the key highlights that is happening within uh, World Food Day of this year and the Horticulture Unit support with Ministry of Food and Agriculture in co close co collaboration with other key ministries and international partners like COIRSA and INCAP as well. So to them we're also thankful and grateful for the support given. So that now brings us to the, to the closing of our virtual World Food Day ceremony of this year. Grow, nourish, sustain together. Thank you very much for participating and attending.